Welcome everyone to the fourth day of OTR Central Christmas 2020 style. I'm shake it up a little bit today with this video. I went to you on Twitter at OTR Central is the Twitter handle. If you don't follow the show, you should. And while you're at it, if you aren't subscribed to this channel, you should also do that. I went to Twitter and asked you to tell me what would be the four wrestlers, who would be the four wrestlers, excuse me, that would be on your pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. Could be from any company, any period of time. Just who would they be? Instead of me just telling you my four and then going into great detail about it, who the hell wants to hear that anymore? Um, wanted to come to you, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read your responses. Um, I thank you guys that participated. If I see some of them that look wonky or weird to me or really awesome, I will surely opine and give some comments on them. But, hey, at the end of the day, it's your pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. So I'm just going to try and go through order and get through as many of them as we can. At Alex Khalil starts us off. He says, Ric Flair, the best worker for decades. Austin literally changed wrestling in the 90s. Shawn Michaels' is style influenced generation of wrestlers. I don't know if it was for the better. And Undertaker, the best gimmick of all time. Solid. This is a great example of a solid Mount Rushmore. I don't agree with all four of the names. I don't even know if I technically agree with any of the names. But it doesn't matter. I don't have to. It's a good list, Alex. Thank you. MJ makes a podcast. Hulk Hogan. Without him, there isn't mainstream wrestling. Undertaker, greatest gimmick ever. Steve Austin, similar to what Alex said. And then Ric Flair. You know, when you look at those names, like, those certainly make a lot of sense. Uh, MC17 Clark says, Hulk Hogan, Bruno San Martino, Ric Flair, and Harley Race. Interesting choices. Interesting list. Dipping a little more into the old school pool with WWF champion Bruno San Martino and NWA's world champion Harley Race. At C Classics 86 says Andre. Uh, he had world recognition before cable television. Uh, an important distinction right there because even some of the big stars of the territory days and NWA world champions were not nearly the level of household name that an Andre the Giant was. Uh, Vince turned wrestling into sports entertainment. Yes, absolutely. Hulk, a charismatic TV figure, a branding and merchandising merchandising icon you know it's it's a it's one of these sad things that you know based on what would have came out about him personally in recent years that you feel awkward even talking about this but when you talk about a pro wrestling R mount rushmore like there's still millions of folks that would think of a pro wrestling and think of somebody like hulk hogan in the first sentence and then stone cold steve austin j harper underscore games 90 says steve austin uh i grew up watching him in the level of over he got was unparalleled. Scott Hall, interesting choice. Underrated wrestling mind, loved his work in WCW in his early TNA days. Interesting. Uh, his work as Razor speaks for itself. Kurt Angle, a solid worker in his quick study. And then Bully, his tag to singles transition. Again, this is Jack Harper's list. I don't know if I agree with any of them, but that's okay. Tony Selby, who is IB Spiffy on Twitter, says, Ric Flair, nothing needs to be said as to why. Maybe there does. The Rock, in terms of charisma and it factors, is there anybody that had more than him? Valid point. Undertaker, the most successful gimmick of all time. And Bobby Heenan, ooh, interesting choice. Best color commentator ever and as a manager gave anyone credibility. Except maybe the Red Rooster. Uh, <laughs> Liam Patrick, 1993. Undertaker, Austin, Rock, and Macho Man. Okay. Lots of you, it seems like, are going down the mostly WWF slash WWE route, which maybe shouldn't be surprising, but uh, not all of you have, but the majority of you have. Uh, at Air Guitar Skills with a Z, says Hulk Hogan, because he brought wrestling into the mainstream. Vince McMahon, the greatest heel character in history, and I would say both on television and in real life. You'll have other people bring up the gorgeous Georges of the world, and they'll draw names like Ric Flair. And Come on. When it comes to all-time greatest heels in professional wrestling, the list begins and ends with Vince McMahon. Or it begins with Vince McMahon, if you want to put it that way. He's clearly number one. 
You cannot make a good argument for somebody else at number one. You may make great arguments for who's number two, but the number one heel in wrestling of all time is Vince, and it's not close. Steve Austin, the biggest star in the hottest period of wrestling. Fair enough. John Cena. I knew somebody was going to throw him out there. Was on top longer than anyone else in the history of the company, for better or worse. Well, yeah, that's not exactly a reason to commemorate him. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, can, at Canadian C273, says it splits it into two sections. All right. Making up his own rules. I like that. Personal favorites and historical significance. Fair enough. Personal favorites. Stone Cold, Steve, CM Punk, Becky Lynch, and Macho Man. Really? I don't even give you grief about the CM Punk one, but Becky Lynch? Like, of all the people you've ever watched in wrestling ever? Like, you're Canadian and you went with Becky Lynch? Interesting. Well, at least you didn't go Dino Bravo. And you know why you didn't? Because he's dead! <laughs> and historical significance. Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and Vince McMahon. At Tristan's Man Cave, says The Rock, because of every great moment from his run, Stone Cold, the face of arguably the greatest area of pro wrestling culture, um, and Hulk Hogan, uh, larger than life, took the industry by storm as a face and well as a heel. That he did. He said he didn't have enough room for the fourth. <laughs> um, at Dalek of Chaos, says... Austin, he made my childhood as one of the biggest stars of all time. Fair enough. Macho Man, one of the greatest characters of all time. It's a damn shame his last appearance was in TNA. A fucking men to that one. The Undertaker, the greatest long-lasting gimmick. Certainly. And Bret Hart, the excellence of execution. I'm actually surprised I'm not seeing more Bret Hart here. Especially because I know there's some of you mother Canuckers that are following me on Twitter that interact with me. So I was surprised Bret didn't get more love. Uh, EJ Dennis 96 says Hogan, Flair, Austin, and Rock for the biggest mainstream wrestling stars ever. And even non wrestling fans or fans who haven't watched in 10 or 15 years know who these guys are. Good logic there. Uh, at California EST 96 says Hulk Hogan for his impact on making wrestling mainstream. Roddy, Roddy Piper, interesting, for inspiring future generations. The Rock for being larger in life like no one has or will do again. And Eddie for being the work rate guy with charisma. Um, he says, Brian Danielson is my fave, but those far are a class on their own. I like your list. I don't agree with it, but I like it. My four current faves. <laughs> okay, we'll go current. Sure, why not? Asuka, fantastic worker with effortless amounts of charisma and personality. There's a hotness to her, I agree. Uh, MJF, incredible in-ring psychology, mic skills, and knows how to get heat and the crowd's attention. Bravo. Keith Lee, great size, better agility, easy top star. Would like to see him get away from that uh, weird cartoonish promo delivery style. It's weird. And Roman Reigns, yes, one more needs to be said. Um, Jet Frost Mobian says, because I'm into Japanese wrestling, three of the four names will be that. Fair enough, sure. Kenta Kobashi had over 700-day reign with the GHC. Um, heavyweight title, Stone Cold Steve Austin, huge draw, made money over. <laughs> I like how you put that, short, sweet, and to the point. Jumbo Saruta, uh, he was the ace from 1983 to 1992 in all Japan. And then Mitsuharu, yeah. that's how I know I'm doing this late. Mitsuharu Misawa, huge draw in Japan and U.S., created pro wrestling Noah. Okay, fair enough. I said you can do it from any company, any period of time. Uh, Peter Gunn 500 says Austin, Hogan, Sting, and Taker. So you're seeing a lot of Austin, you're seeing a lot of Hogan, you're seeing quite a bit of Taker. It's the first Sting mention we've gotten, though. Interesting. Orange is media. Flair, Austin, Rock, and Hogan. From the casual fan to the hardcore, these wrestlers have been the most impactful, and they were chosen by the people. Fair enough. At Dickie Bennett says Hogan, Flair, Taker, and Jericho for me. Sure, why not? Uh, eight, JBL Rules 316. Mankind Dude Love Cactus Jack and Mick Foley. I want it! <laughs> that might be the best one yet. It's technically the four faces of Mick Foley, not just three. That's outstanding. <laughs> Add a Perv Shankar 1 says Bruno San Martino, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, and Vince McMahon. Uh, Joseph M3601 7038. Can you guys come up with shorter Twitter handles? Um, for WWE, oh, he went by company. All right. Undertaker, Hogan, Rock, and Stone Cold. WCW, Sting, Goldberg, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair. ECW, 
Raven, both Dudley boys, Tommy Dreamer, and TNA, AJ Styles, Robert Roode, James Storm, and Abyss. So you went with TNA, and you didn't mention the name I th thought you were going to mention? Bravo, sir. Bravo. And as a matter of fact, for, for doing just that, you now have your first follower on Twitter. So congratulations, Joseph Moran. That's what happens when you don't go tiptoeing through those tulips. You get to smell some of the roses. Bags over bomb, Dad, <laughs> says The Rock, Stone Cold, The Undertaker, Vince McMahon. He puts in parentheses, one of the best performers of all time. And I will tell you from It Factor, star presence, you know, command of an audience, command of a television, there are a few that could live up to Vince's standards. That is absolutely true. It is why to this day, and eventually again, Whenever we get fans back into arenas, and this, the arenas are half full because of WWE, Raw, after all. Fans can sit there and shit talk Vince McMahon on Twitter and in their YouTube videos and all over the place, but as soon as that music hits and it says no chance in hell, Vince gets one of the loudest pops of the night. And that tells you something. Uh, at host... Is it Juice Alexis? Damn it! You guys in your Twitter names. Your Twitter handles. I'll say Juice Alexis. There we go. All time. Undertaker, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. Edward No Punk 1. Undertaker, Stone Cold, The Rock, and Hulk Hogan. Uh, at the Line Drive says, for me, it's Cena, Taker, HBK, and Eddie. But I tend to value longevity and co consistency in these discussions. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Mr. Jinx 05. Bruno, Hulk Hogan. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon. Oh, Charlie responded and he said, Hogan, Flair, Austin, Rock. And I'll put dollar signs next to him indicating that they made a lot of money in the business. Uh, your boy underscore Adam said, this is biased, but I'd say Rock, Austin, Hogan, and Taker. Why is that biased? It's your thought. You know, maybe you're saying it's biased because it's all WWF guys. Fair enough, but... And a lot of other people are doing, there ain't nothing wrong with that bias. It is about you and who you would put on your pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, mind you. Uh, at Commando 1986 says, Bruno, Hogan, Austin, and Cena, the faces of their generation. Interesting spin. At underscore Keys 10 says, Hogan, Taker, Austin, and Rock. Seeing a few of those. Uh, at Nick Willis PNW. You know, this should earn you a block. But since we're in the festive holiday spirit, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. I should. I absolutely should. And when you look at the suggestion here, his Mount Rushmore is clearly an attempt to just troll the Schleich Daddy. Defend you. The Memphis Mid-Card piece of crap. Broke 10,000 guitars, never drew a goddamn dime. Cody Rhodes. Dolph, technically you said Dolph Ziegler. So I am more intrigued. I want to hear about this Dolph Ziegler. Because who you may have been referencing, perhaps, I would say, <coughs> fuck Dolph Ziegler. But Dolph Ziegler? Z-I-E-G-L-E-R? <laughs> Tell me more. Is it a parody of that fucking flopping around undercard piece of crap? And then Dave Meltzer. <laughs> <laughs> Meltzer Magoo, Meltzer Magoo. <laughs> if your match is in Japan, he makes a hullabaloo. <laughs> At Charles Redman 1. Eddie Guerrero, the Invisible Man, Kurt Angle, an American badass taker. Obviously a Ruthless Aggression Era fan, fair enough. At Jack Dunn, 1376-1848, says Undertaker, Andre, Hogan, and Austin. Again, we've seen quite a few of those. At the real underscore Mr. Underscore X says McMahon, Hogan, Taker, and Austin. That's from my childhood, except Hogan, but how can you exclude him, brother? Um, at Jamal Lacey says Flair, Austin, Hogan, and Taker. Flair was the first larger in life persona in wrestling, in my opinion. <laughs> like, even if you want to call me. Hogan bias. Like, Hogan wasn't even that. Not even close to that. Like, he might be the first one that you were familiar with, but even then I would argue against that. But you can say, when somebody like Muhammad Ali says they pattern themselves after a gorgeous George, 
Like it's just one of many examples of previous generations of those kind of larger than life personas in professional wrestling. Austin brought a realism to wrestling in his time as badass rival Mike Tyson's. Okay, fair enough. Taker, it's freaking Taker. And then Hogan took wrestling to the mainstream. And that he certainly did. And then at Boston Fan 79 version 1 says Flair, Savage, Taker, and Austin. Very, very good. Thank you for that, Boston fan. And thank you, everyone, for your responses to this. It's fun to see some of the different perspectives and different opinions. It speaks a little bit to your maybe your exposure to wrestling, the period of time that you started watching wrestling, or where you had the deepest emotional connection, the type of brand you prefer, the type of talents that you prefer. Interesting list, that's for sure. Um, as far as if you ask me now in 2020, like, who would be on my pro wrestling R Mount Rushmore? Um, I think you could debate some of the names. But, obviously, I'm somebody that defers to impact and meaning and significance and influence and star power and money made. And, you know, those are the things that really matter. And I think you could certainly say you put both wrestlers and promoters into contention for this. Uh, number one has to be Vince McMahon. It has to be. Like to this day, people associate Vince McMahon with wrestling, wrestling with Vince McMahon. In fact, I'd be very curious, like, even for those that put out there who they would put on their pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, that's one conversation. But if you were forced to create one pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, and you said, everybody's got to come to a consensus about the four guys. I can't imagine, other than hatred for the man and bias against the man, how anybody could sit there and say that Vince McMahon isn't arguably the most important and historically relevant and significant and impactful, both good and especially bad, forces in professional wrestling history. He absolutely is on pro wrestling's Mount Rushmore. It doesn't mean you have to like it or want it to make it true. It is absolutely so. Am I wrong here? Am I wrong here? And you can hate him personally all you want. Certainly entitled to do that. And he's put himself in that position where he deserves that. But Hulk Hogan absolutely has to go on the pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. He is, in terms of what was done with wrestling and longevity and impact and changing the business, you're talking about Hogan. Hulk Hogan absolutely has to be on the pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. You could hate his work. You could think his character was corny. You could think he was a heel when he was being presented as a babyface. And all those things are certainly true. But the man made money. He made many, many monies. And the WWE is who it is today, both for good or bad, because of Hulk Hogan. You know, and I've talked about it you know, over the years that Hulk Hogan is that person that when people think about professional wrestling, he's the name that people think of, or he's one of the first few that they think of. And that's not Ric Flair. I'm sorry. Like some of y'all that have watched the shoot interviews over the years where these guys have taught in the business have talked about work rate and talk about who's a good worker or not. And you've heard Ric Flair talk about who's a great worker and who's not. Like that might have made you think, well, that's what matters. No, it doesn't. What matters is emotional connection to the fans. What matters is the amount of money made. And when you think about what Ric Flair was at the top of his game, he was playing second fiddle to Hulk Hogan in the when he was in running the top of the WWF, whereas Flair was doing the NWA thing and the Crockett territory thing. Um, you know, I'm not trying to knock Flair. I'm just trying to be realistic here. And then you think about as you got into the peak of WCW in the 90s, you talk about that period of 96 to let's say 99, it was Hogan's heel turn in Hogan that came in that put WCW in that position. Flair played second fiddle. Flair is not greater than Hogan and y'all need to stop that crazy crap. You could like Ric Flair more personally if you want. You might like more of his style as a wrestler and that's fine. You might want to pretend like he hasn't had some racist tendencies over the years. Uh, you of course will be mistaken. But, again, Hogan has to go on there. And I don't think it's Flair, either. Nah, not, not if he only got four faces. You know, as far as, like, the Austins and the Rocks, like, to me, you're putting Rock more on there because of his movie star stuff than you are his actual true wrestling contributions. 
Austin, I mean, he was white hot in his time. But, you know, you can make a strong argument that the WWF had its best year of business ever in 2000 when Austin was largely a non-factor. And his real run at the top, effectively, was, you know, about three-ish years. So is that really worth putting somebody on Pro Wrestling's Mount Rushmore? That he was in one place for three years, he was white hot, and he was absolutely a moneymaker. And I'll never dismiss that. He absolutely was. But when I hear somebody like a Meltzer Magoo say that Austin was a bigger star than Hogan, you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Dave. You know better. So stop saying stupid stuff. And it's not just him. I'm not just picking on him. It's when people say that Austin was more over than some of these other guys. Like, you could argue in his time, Rock was every bit as over, and some of the business with The Rock was better than what it was with Austin. And you could say, how much of Austin would have really made it if it wasn't for the Mr. McMahon character? Where Rock was able to, yeah, there was certainly association with the Mr. McMahon character, because everybody that was at the top had some type of association with the Mr. McMahon character during the Monday Night Wars period, during the Attitude Era, but... The reality is, is that Vince McMahon, as a whole, was more important to the Attitude Era product than Austin was. And I know that will get the flaming keyboard fingers of fire ready, and then the launch position locked and loaded, and you're going to shoot. Go ahead. That's okay. But, you know, I could make an argument for Andre the Giant in a very strong one. Like, you could talk about Hogan and Vince and what they did with WWF. You know, but it's Andre that helped draw 90-plus thousand people to the Pontiac Silverdome at WrestleMania 3, no matter how much uh, certain dirt sheet dipshits will try to tell you there weren't 90-plus thousand people at the Silverdome. Um, it's Andre that helped draw 33 million people to watch a February 1988 main event show on NBC. 33 million people. And when you think about larger-than-life personalities and larger-than-life presences in wrestling, Andre was the household name way before Hulk Hogan ever was considered to be. And this was to an earlier uh, tweeter's comment. This was before the days of cable and the Internet and everything else. Like To this day, almost three decades later, you'll hear sometimes in pop culture people make Andre the Giant references, and they know about Andre the Giant. They're familiar with Andre the Giant, or they've at least heard the name Andre the Giant. They know who Andre the Giant is. So when I think about, you know, my kind of qualifications for that pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, I believe Andre belongs on that list, which brings you to that fourth slot. And I think you could go, you know, any variety of different directions. You can go back in the old days with John Landis. You could sit there and go with somebody like a Vern Gagne. You could sit there and go certainly with somebody like a Lou Fez, a Gorgeous George, although I'd certainly lean more towards somebody like a Fez for how long he was associated with the NWA's championship and, you know, how much of a star he was and how much money he made. Um, you know, so the fourth position I'm much more flexible on, but I'm not really that flexible in terms of my pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. If I, as it stands right now, and, you know, perspectives and opinions can change over the years, but I think it is Vince Hogan, and Andre are on there for sure. And then the fourth one, you can put whatever legend that makes sense on there that you want. So anyways, thanks so much to all of you guys. Seriously mean it. Uh, that tweeted to me, your pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. I enjoyed this quite a bit. Thank you for checking out this video and the rest of the 12 days of OTRS Central Christmas video series. If you didn't enjoy this series or didn't enjoy this video, humbug on your ass! Next up will be the third day of OTRS Central Christmas. And that's right, we're bringing it back again. It's Pro Wrestling F. Mary Kill. And I'll take to Twitter and announce that we're going to keep it to ladies and only ladies this time. Humor me here, please. F. Mary Kill. Pro Wrestling version. Let me have it. Go to Twitter. At OTR Central is the Twitter handle. And shout me your three names. And I'll come on here in the next video and say F. Mary Kill. All right, cool.